Great words of wisdom, Billy C. Keep up the great work as the undisputed people's champion with your show, Talking Boxing with Billy C. Any last words to anyone who's listening? This is your fault, you bonehead. Talking box. I mean, and we're back. I hit the wrong button. You're listening to the Talking Box with Billy C. Show. Glad you could join us. Don't forget about our uh, following us on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Follow us on Twitter. It's at Talking Boxing. That's T A L K I N B O X I N G. We'd appreciate it. And uh, speaking of appreciation, I appreciate that Melissa Smith is joining us right now with her monthly women's boxing report. What's up, Melissa? Hey, how are you? First no. off, happy happy uh, every kind of holiday. I guess we have a big confluence of all the religions the last few days. Yeah, kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, c- uh, happy holidays to you too, man. It was uh, it was nice for me. I hope it was nice for you. Oh, absolutely! It was really sweet. Um, so there's a lot going on in women's boxing all over the place. And one thing I know we wanted to talk a lot about was the. Uh, the union, if you will, of WBF, WIBF, and GBU um, to sort of create a unified belt. And I want to get into that a lot, but I thought we'd, if, if it's okay with you, we'll talk about a few other things and then we can really dig into that particularly huge change for women's boxing. Sounds good to me, man. Roll with what you certainly, want. Certainly um, helps uh, legitimize, uh, you know, get rid of all these crazy little baby belts and, and create some some streams of opportunity for female boxers. One thing I do want to talk about, it happened this weekend. I don't know how many of uh, listeners out there are, have heard of BKB boxing, big knockout boxing. This is this new model where um, instead of boxing in a boxing ring, it's a round pit, or it looks like a pit, but basically it's a 17-foot round diameter um, with sort of uh, sides where all the audience sits, kind of like a bit of an arena. And the fights are seven rounds, and they are two minutes apiece, and there are no ropes. And it's two, it's two minutes for men and women because... And women. It's I exactly it. the same. It's yeah. two-minute fights, seven rounds, that's it. This weekend there was a, a huge uh, pay-per-view card out of the Mandalay in Las Vegas. The top of the card um, had some pretty big fighters. It had Curtis Stevens fighting um, uh, against Gabe Rosado. Ended in a draw. But the big thing was this was the first time they had two female fighters on their, one of their cards. It was the great lightweight fighter, Layla McCarter, who has been around forever and is, has won more belts than there are. <laughs> She's just an alphabet soup, if you will, of, of great fighting for the 36-13-5 and five record. And she fought Diana Prazek, who's a fighter out of Australia, who's um, been being trained by uh, the great Lucia Riker. Well, they went toe-to-toe for seven rounds. McCarter dropped, her, uh, dropped Prazek in the fourth round, dropped her again in the seventh, and then the referee actually waved off the fight with 10 seconds left and gave Layla McCarter the win and the, and their first light web belt under that model. I, what this really means for boxing, I don't know. I guess it's uh, the producers of this have taken a look at some of the success of MMA and s- tried to figure out a way that they could um, bring some of the, some of the fighting um, or some of the opportunity um, to get new audiences by taking it out of the ring and by shortening the fight so that it's forced to be electric in a constant um, battle. And without ropes, you're just always on, you have no opportunity to use that as part of your defense or offense. So it made for a very interesting show. I don't know exactly what it's going to mean for boxing at all, never mind women's boxing, but it's, it is the first time two female fighters have been on pay-per-view, and I don't know how long. 
Yeah, no, so, I, I like the, the bare, uh, it used to be bare knuckle boxing, um, but yeah. then they changed it. And then uh, Las Vegas actually counts these as regular boxing matches despite the time difference and the, the different ring. I like the ring. I, you know, if they, if they get, you know, up on the side, it's considered a knockdown. If they run up there, they're avoiding it. So I like it. And, and you're right that the uh, McCarter um, Prezak fight was, uh, was historical. And normally they fight five rounds five two-minute rounds but the championship are the seven so and that, right, that's how exactly. that works and i and i liked it and i thought layla i i can't remember her looking as sharp as she did uh on on saturday i mean do you no i and she looked amazing uh, i mean it, and she just and Prazik is no slouch but she just ran rings around her uh, and literally i mean she she just was you know the skill and experience of all these years of boxing really showed, and she came to win, and when she did, and then she called <laughs> called out him and my A fighters after at the end of it, and sort of said, "Hey, meet me in here. We'll box." <laughs> yeah. Well, you know she she's trying to use that as a as it's not really a hundred percent boxing, and she was specifically calling out Ronda Rousey. So uh, right, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, no, that was uh, I, I enjoyed it. I, I watched it. I, I've been following it. And uh, I'm, I'm glad they uh, put female boxing on, and and uh, we'll see where we'll see where it goes. It definitely was an exciting fight. Uh, some of them weren't as good as the previous, but that was one of the top fights I thought of the night. Yeah, I think so. I agree with you. And you know, again, it it, it it it's an interesting model to to watch to see whether that develops, to see whether some leagues will develop around it. I mean, you and I have had these conversations in the past about how to get. Well, how to create excitement in boxing anyway. And, and look, you know, most NBC and CBS are starting to put boxing back on the air for free. And that's also a huge change that's happened this year. There haven't been female fights yet. Doesn't mean there won't be. Uh, this coming weekend, the Garcia-Peterson fight is going to be at Barclays. Um, it'll be live on NBC. And on the undercard, Heather Hardy is fighting. Um it won't get on the air, but there might be some mention of it, and there certainly might be a little bit of uh, some clips from that early fight if it turns out to be exciting. Um, she's uh, Heather's fighting a, a Hungarian fighter named um, Renata, and please forgive me if I mispronounce the last name, Damsodi, I believe that's how it's pronounced. She uh, she has a 12-6 and six record. It lost her two most recent fights, but her last fight, which was a WIBF and WBF super flyweight battle, um, in November, uh, she lost on split decision, a very close fight. It was uh, 94 95, 94 95, and then 95 94 the other way. So she's obviously a pretty decent fighter, so we'll see what happens in that bout. Yeah, but she's Heather small. Thing. She's smaller. She's smaller. He you know, Heather. I I'm waiting for Heather to get into a, a, real, a real fight. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I really want to see her tested because. I, she's similar to Naomi Bosky. Would you rob? A, would you rob someplace or what? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're coming to get you. They're coming to get you, Melissa. But uh, I, I want to. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I want. I want to see her in there with somebody uh, um, soon. Well, yeah, with a little more experience. I mean, we'll see what this uh, woman brings into the ring. And well, she's got smaller. this, I mean, this woman. Yeah, she fights tough. She's got the experience, but she's smaller. You know, so yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. So we'll see. Uh, the other uh, big thing coming up in the amateur world is um, in uh, down in Atlanta, Georgia, Terry Moss, uh, who has Buckhead Fight Club down there, is putting on the International Class of Champions for USA Boxing, which is um, will be uh, it's it's an opportunity for elite female boxers from. United States, Canada, China, and Bulgaria to compete. It will feature gold medalist uh, Clarissa Shields, my notice from the U, um, USA boxing team. That it will be a round robin competition. It really helps set them up because next year we'll be getting ready for the Olympics in 2016. So this is a really important contest um, in the run up to next year. Um, and you know there aren't a lot of opportunities for international competition on years when they don't have the um, when the International Boxing Association, IEBA, 
every two to four, three years has their international competition with teams from all over the world. So having these opportunities to box even, you know, three or four or five teams of uh, different com- companies, I'm sorry, countries, gives the fighters international exposure and opportunities to box in different styles. Chinese fighters are really tough, so are the Canadians, so are the Bulgarians, so this will be a really good test for the American women who are competing. And an interesting opportunity for Terry Moss to kind of continue her role. Um, she does corporate fight night down in Atlanta and you know, is involved now both in the amateur and in the professional world you know, um, on the boxing side as well as a trainer, so we're really excited for her that she's had this opportunity. Yeah, Terry's great. Um, great for women's mm-hmm. boxing. Terry's great for women's boxing. I, I work with her, and uh, um, I'm looking forward to a lot of good things with uh, Terry in the near future. So, um. yeah, and she, I know she's she had she's been doing uh, WIBF fights, and and has been in discussions about doing WBF fights, and perhaps the, a nice way to segue into our discussion on the unification of the three three very good organizations for women's boxing uh, and long-term organizations for women's boxing. WIBF probably being the longest uh, in, in place. It was started by Barbara Buttrick, who, as uh, listeners probably know, or, or if they don't, uh, will shortly learn, she is a, a true pioneer of women's boxing starting in the late 1940s and boxed in the 1950s all across England, France and the United States, barnstorming, um, and then in 1993, she started WIBF, and it has been going strong ever since, and was really the first organization to to offer legitimate belts, let's put it that way, <laughs> for uh, just female boxing. And then, of course, there's World Boxing Federation, um, very, very premier boxing league, and the Global Boxing Union that has done a lot of work in Europe. So this is an exciting opportunity um, to give women's boxing champions a chance to be really proud of what they're earning. You know. Well, what's what's happened with it? Um, as I'm, I'm involved with the World Boxing Federation, and and you hit on the head with uh, Terry Moore. She's going to be working with me as as of uh, effective uh, as of April 1st she's officially with the World Boxing Federation so we're looking mm-hmm. for some great things uh, from her but uh, what's happened is you know a year or so ago uh, the World Boxing Federation was clearly at the top with uh, women's uh, champions you know the overall talent of mm-hmm. uh, women's uh, champions uh, from you know every weight class, pretty much uh, belonged, uh, or I should say, was in the WBF. But now, the big guys, the WBC, WBA, um, have uh, have decided to start actively uh, crowning female champions, and uh, a lot of them have jumped ship. So that's what uh, started the uh, um, the merger, so to speak, with the WIBF, like you mentioned. Uh, uh, was one of the older uh, sanctioning bodies and and the GBU and and they're starting to get some fights um, that are uh, uh, being called the unified titles. Uh, the champion will walk out basically with three belts, and I love it. I think it's good. I think it uh, adds value, um, and I think that uh, a lot of female champions are going to come back uh, and go that route. What's your thoughts? I, I agree, and. and, and because specifically because uh, the reach of all three organizations is really and truly international um, across you know across Europe, across Asia, uh, United States, and South America. So you know when you think about a true world champion, this unified title belt is really giving that opportunity. I mean, WBC tends to at least in the women's belts, you see a lot of it in Mexico. Um, some in Europe, but there's not that real sense of cross fertilization, and I think there's an opportunity to do that. Also, with by unifying all the rules for all three organizations, I think it will make a lot a, a lot easier. There's only one sanctioning fee that'll be involved, so um, it'll give promoters a better opportunity to to find the kind of uh, to raise the kind of capital necessary to support those bouts it'll be sort of an easier way to deal with it and 
it also, uh, for those who are trying very hard to put these fights into media, um, by selling it as a unified title, by, by demonstrating the quality of the fighters that are participating, it also gives more opportunity and lends more legitimacy to trying to sell into those media markets, um, which is only for the good. And it, even if it starts only um, in, in the European and, and Asian and Mex uh, South American markets on their particular either pay-per-view networks or sports networks, um, it will filter into the United States as well because, uh, as you say, as, as fighters begin to see the quality of the fights and the opportunities that they offer, they'll, they'll want to really push to get onto those fight cards. So well, we'll, one, thing, we'll one, one thing the merger has done is it's, uh, it's forcing the unification of champions that are part of all three organizations that may hold the belt. For example, I was just informed uh, by uh, uh, an official letter uh, stating that uh, there's a fight between Chevelle Halbach and uh, the WIBA champion, who's uh, the welterweight champion, and uh, we have a certain amount of time to make a deal, and then if not, it goes to purse bid. So they are not going to let... Um, you know, fighters just hold on to their belts just to say they're a champion. They are going to make them uh, fight unified titles, which I think is great. And I think that the whole branding and marketing idea behind that unified belt, I, I hope it bleeds into the men's divisions, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. But right now, I, I love what we're seeing and, and hearing, and uh, uh, I think it's going to be a great thing for women's boxing. I agree with you, and I think that is very exciting to push to push for these bouts. bouts and it's kind of and and you know one of the biggest problems with in boxing, and it's men's boxing as well as women's boxing, is the inactivity, the months and months and months of inactivity. It is so hard to get fights, uh, and for women, it's it's even harder. Um, and by pushing this kind of thing, it it creates opportunity down the line to have more fights. Um, because you really have something to strive for, too. I mean, you know, look, when I remember when I was a kid and used to watch boxing with my family, I mean, it was exciting to think there'd be one new heavyweight champion, one middleweight champion, and, you know, watching how that all played out. And, and this is an opportunity to create that kind of excitement again. Um, we'll, we'll see how it pans out, but um, as with a lot of other things that are going on, just in, in the sport of boxing, in, in related martial sports, uh, there's a lot of jockeying for position. Um, you know, what I'll, sort of, you, you think about it in other, in other areas, like you think of big pharma or things like that. We also have big boxing, you know, boxing promotion, promoters that have been around forever and have just been in control of the sport for a very, very long time. And, you know, some of those, Bob Arum isn't going to be around forever. Don King isn't going to be around forever. And, and following in those models is, is not necessarily working for the promoters that are coming up behind them. So um, any, any opportunity, whether it's by the sanctioning bodies who are sort of carving out their own territory and, sort of, and demanding change, or promoters themselves who are trying out new models, uh, it's only going to benefit the sport, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with you, and I think we got some uh, better days coming for women's boxing. But uh, <laughs> I, I think so too. And don't uh, underestimate, you know, the excitement that the Olympics can bring as well. I, I don't know if you've been to any of these amateur fights. I hope you can get down to Georgia um, to see some of the boxing. In, at the end of the month, and if not, USA Boxing typically will have those links on their uh, website to see some of the fights live. These are some good fighters. They really are. And as those women begin to cross over into the professional ranks, if there's opportunity for them to do so, it's just going to elevate the game one, you know, one, two, three levels higher uh, and create a really exciting professional side of the sport. I'm looking forward but, to it, and uh, uh, for sure. And I and and I I like uh, everything Terry does. I unfortunately I won't be there for that event. I got some other stuff going on, but uh, uh, hopefully we can catch up soon. And we'll look forward to your uh, report next month. Yes, sounds exciting. All right, Melissa. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. 
Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. That's Melissa Smith. Don't forget to get a copy of her book, uh, The Women's uh, History of Women's Boxing. You can get it real easy by visiting our website, www.billycboxing.com, and uh, going on into the book club. Uh, Melissa covers the sport from its beginning, and I'm telling you, it's from the beginning, man. So check it out, www.billycboxing.com, and uh, get on to the book club, and you'll see her book. Um,